Hey, what's up, guys? Good to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So, obviously, there was a little bit of news. I know you tweeted out that Ukraine, re le Ukraine, re Ukraine leaders say that Russia invasion is not imminent, but we also heard that there's some protesters that were clashing with police. What's happening now? Yeah, it's actually kind of amazing that uh, in Ukrainian media, if you go look at it today, there's actually this group called FOP, which is actually a group of small business owners that's been protesting the lockdown policies that were going on in Kiev and going on nationwide in Ukraine over the past couple of years. They've been protesting there. They're now back today in Kiev, right outside of the parliament, clashing with police over this new tax law that's going in place. And it really blows my mind that here Western media is Ukraine, 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 Ukraine all day today. And yet when you actually look at Ukrainian media, or you look at people that are on the ground in Maidan Square in Kiev, there was a huge protest today. Uh, a gun went off at one point. One of the demonstrators, you know, got uh, actually fired a gun off into the air. And you will not see this covered anywhere in mainstream media because they're not interested in actually talking about what's going on in Ukraine. They're talking about the, wanting to beat these war drums when it comes to uh, these eastern provinces and when it comes to Russia. That's all they care about. They could not care less about the actual people of Ukraine and what they have to say. Huh. Jack. How, let me just ask the question everybody's wondering. How likely is it that President Biden is actually going to get us into another war? So it's kind of this weird situation, right, where uh, Biden probably doesn't want to get us into a war himself. Personally, people around him do want to kick. I mean, Putin wants to kick NATO out of Ukraine and the U.S. wants to kick Putin out of, out of Ukraine. Right. So it's, it's this tete a tete. Neither of them really wants to go to war. The problem is that Biden is so stupid and he's surrounded by people like Tony Blinken, who isn't qualified, the secretary of state. To be uh, to be the Secretary of State sitting in Thomas Jefferson's chair, um, now he should be like the front desk clerk, maybe you know, getting coffee for people at the Secretary of State <laughs> at some point. And so, because of these miscalculations, look, uh, Kabul was only five months ago, four months ago, the fighting really died down. So we're really not that far removed. So you um, you know, normally I would say no, but it does seem like a situation here where these numbskulls, these idiots could actually miscalculate us, ourselves right into a potential conflict with a nuclear power. Well, you brought up Afghanistan, and how likely is it that there's going to be Americans stranded in Ukraine, just like there are still Americans stranded in Afghanistan? Uh, that, that's completely off the table. That's just not going to happen. I mean, uh, even if there is something that's going on, we're talking about the front lines, these eastern provinces that are far, far away from Kiev, far, far away from any area. Uh, we're seeing people now that being said you do have american uh contractors private military contractors people that have gone over there's some photos circulating on social media today of former american special forces that are out there on the front lines um supporting ukraine and potentially going up against these russian-backed separatists so if those guys still do uh hold american citizenship and i'm sure they do that could be a potential situation if one of them a very tense situation if one of them were to be captured if one of them were to be killed while involved in this fighting on the front lines if sh a skirmish should occur uh, Jack, you were talking, or so last week, this time last week, sending U.S. troops to be on the ground there or even in the region was like not really even on the table. And now over the weekend, we got hit with Biden contemplating whether or not to send troops into the area. I'm curious, is that necessary or is he trying to really, really harshly walk back his statements from the Wednesday press briefing in which he, quote unquote, gave the green light to Putin? Is 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 it necessary or, or is he just is this a political move, do you think? Well, well none of this is necessary. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, to answer that question right, uh, you know, right off the bat, obviously none of this is necessary. They're easily uh, diplomatic economic solutions that could be brought here. I mean, we, we had Ronald Reagan, one of the most conservative presidents uh, in recent memory, and he never did anything like this. He said, let's go to Reykjavik, let's go to Iceland, let's sit down. At that time, it was the Soviet Union, but let's sit down and have talks across the table. He actually left at one point because he didn't like the way the talks were going, but using that tough one-on-one -on -one high level leader diplomacy. President Biden isn't looking to do anything like that because he understands that his domestic agenda is, has been a complete failure here in the United States. So he's what he's doing, wag the dog. That's the same thing UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is doing. And by the way, President Zelensky is only polling at about 28 to 30 percent in his opinion polls right now. So he's in a situation where this actually is benefiting him directly um, in, with his domestic audience as well. They are looking at ways to shore things up to say, well, you know, we couldn't uh, help you out with COVID. 
The crisis theater is dying down with that. So what are we going to do? We're going to pick a fight with Putin, and then we're going to say that we stood up to Putin and Putin back down when, you know, it, you know, it really looked like they were actually the ones exacerbating the situation to begin with. And I, I think this is really upsetting Americans across the country because our southern border is not being taken care of at all. And then you hear about this Russia-Ukraine border invasion, and then all of a sudden you have President Biden that's just ready to get after it. <laughs> like, what's, like, what, how should Americans be responding to this? Because it seems like they're rightfully upset. Well, I think one great response, not even uh, specifically about the border, is just, you know, look, my wife was here on Turning Point Live a couple of days ago, and she's actually from that area. She was born in the Soviet Union. But, you know, she's not asking me about what's going on with the borders over there. You know why? Because the borders are always changing over there. They've been changing over there for 500 years. That's just kind of what it, you know, what it means to be living in that part of the world. But you know what she cares about? The fact that she can't get fresh produce on the shelves of the grocery stores here in Washington, D.C., the fact that she can't get fresh meat for, our, you know, for the kids, for the family. So the question is, how does us picking a fight all the way on the other side of the world with a nuclear power do anything to help the people that are actually here right now in the United States, living through the end of this pandemic, hopefully, and then going and still having to live through the lingering effects of the massive inflation and the massive economic devastation that has been wrought down because of the response to the pandemic and the mismanagement thereof? Uh, going, going to kind of back to on the ground stuff in Ukraine, uh, David Ignatius in the Washington Post had uh, some uh, Ukrainian soldiers there that said their goal was to kill as many Russians as possible if they were to invade as quickly as possible in hopes of putting public pressure on Putin to move out of Ukraine. Is that a plan that would work if it were to come to that? Uh, does, does Putin bow to any sort of public pressure or is it just wishful thinking? Yeah, I mean, you know, looking at, looking at it from a military standpoint, uh, the Russian experience with war is very grim. Um, mm -hmm. If you look over the, just the past 100 years, the past 50 years, um, they've lived through the horrific events of the Eastern Front, as well as, you know, Poland lived through that, Belarus lived through that, Ukraine lived through that. Uh, they are very battle hardened. They've gone up against uh, the separatists in Chechnya. Uh, they've been fighting in Syria. I mean, keep in mind, they, they're parked there in the middle of winter and not one of those Russian soldiers is saying, oh, I want to go back to Moscow. I want to go be warm. Uh, this is something that they train for and are incredibly hardy. This is something that, you know, I think a lot of Americans who, you know, we've, our soldiers, our ground forces, we've been fighting, you know, these skirmishes around the world for the better part of the last 20 years. But Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, these are not the kind of forces that are anywhere near comparable. I mean, they didn't have an air force, they didn't have tanks the same way that, uh, well, certainly the insurgents um, in Iraq didn't in the same way that the Russian military were. Well, an interesting part of this too is President Biden's connection to Ukraine as well. A lot of people were talking about Hunter Biden during the presidential run. And I know you had a video from 2019 that you tweeted out as well. How do you think this plays a factor in this situation? Right. Look, I mean, we know that Ukraine has been the family business for the Biden family when uh, when President Biden was vice president Biden. Hunter Biden was going over there getting 50,000 reasons a month to care about Ukraine. <laughs> he was being bought off essentially by these Ukrainian oligarchs and the uh, Ukraine, by the way. You know, I hear people saying, oh, it's it's this ba shining bastion of democracy. But you can go and look at act and read actually uh, European court audits that are finding that Ukraine is consistently one of the most corrupt countries in Eastern Europe. Um, they have, and certainly many of the countries in Eastern Europe are having problems coming out of that post-Soviet era, that post-communist era, where they're still basically run by these quasi-socialist systems. You've got oligarchs, you've got energy moguls, you've got all sorts of people that are uh, finding ways to line the pockets of not only leaders within the region, but also leaders here, turns out, within the United States. And of course, Hunter Biden was one of them. So my question is, I wonder how much art Hunter Biden sold over the last six months. Well, I was gonna say, why do the Bidens like Ukraine so much? I mean, are they known for their Parmesan cheese or what? <laughs> yeah, exactly, no, uh, uh, borscht, I guess, if you're into borscht and uh, turnip soup and stuff. I, I, have a, I have a question now, and I'm really worried about this when it comes to um, the consideration of American troops being sent down there uh, to the border. Now, God forbid, say one of our American soldiers are killed. Will, do you, do you think President Biden will take it to uh, a, a war type of scenario with uh, these, these uh, political actors and these, uh, Russia and, and, and the like? 
You know, look, uh, again, you know, the, that is obviously the issue right here in terms of all of this. And I would absolutely be on the lookout right now for any flash in the pan, any type of one of these false flag attacks, anything that could exacerbate the situation. You know, there was actually, like I said earlier, there was a gun went off uh, in Kiev today outside the security services near the parliament. And people were thinking, you know, is this something to do with Russia? Is this something to do with one of the national security services? What's going on? So the, uh, the environment and the situation are ripe for chicanery, for tomfoolery, for people messing around and exacerbating situations that could, unfortunately, because of the ratcheting up of this by Western and Eastern military leaders, that you've got a situation now where something like that could, unfortunately, kick something off because people are using this for cynical political gains rather than for actual geopolitical strategy. That's why you're not hearing President Biden talk about sitting down with President Putin. That's not why, why you're not hearing him talk about going to Reykjavik or holding any kind of diplomatic talks whatsoever. It's military, 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 troops on the ground, the sons and daughters of American families being sent once again into harm's way. Uh, Jack, so Secretary Blinken is there in Kiev talking about sanctions, sanctions, sanctions. That seems to be the only thing he uh, can add to the table. Um, the Financial Times is reporting that Russia over the last seven years has bolstered their central reserve uh, by like quintupled them. Uh, they're in bed with more with China. They're less dependent on Western investments. Uh, so with that, with Putin safeguarding himself against sanctions, in your opinion, is the threat of sanctions going to work? And if we have to implement those sanctions, will those work or can they get around them? Well, keep in mind that sanctions only work essentially when you have a unipolar world where people are all plugged into uh, these uh, systems like the SWIFT system or mm -hmm. like the IMF, et cetera. By the way, Russia, just a few, um, their state council just a few moments ago, I saw a flash across um, my inbox that they said, if any attempt is made to kick Russia out of the Swiss system of this process is financial um, transactions, that they will, they will cut off the gas supply from Nord Stream 2 and the rest of the gas supply to Europe. And of course, uh, because you have such a huge green movement in Europe, they are not, uh, outside of France, they're not building any more nuclear reactors. They're not making the switch to nuclear power, the same way that President Biden has cut our own gas supplies in favor of these, um, you know, pie in the sky, uh, renewable energy sources that just aren't there yet to actually help people. So, of course, uh, President Putin, Vladimir Putin, he's nobody's fool. Of course, he's doing this in the middle of the winter, the dead of winter, threatening to cut off gas, knows that the financial situation is what it is, and that he literally has Europe over a barrel in this situation. Probably the final question for you, Jack, is... But first off, before that, Human Events Daily with you has been fantastic. The way you're able to break this down in such a concise way, I think, is so important right now. Today's episode, dude, straight fire. Straight fire. <laughs> <laughs> always, always from you, Jack. But when you had that Ukrainian official said that Kiev is in a better shape than L.A. Wow. Do you yeah. think that's going to actually... Have I mean, President Biden, the no lies detected. What can I say? Was he wrong? <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, at that's all. a major yeah. <laughs> what's what's this is, uh, Keep in mind, right? This is the way the rest of the world looks at us, right? They see what's going on in our cities. Our media is so powerful. Our social media is all over the place. They can see what's going on in Detroit. It's uh, Chicago, New York, Minneapolis, Baltimore, etc., Philadelphia, Philadelphia, right? They see mm. what's happening. So we are kind of this seen as this weird kind of like a, a decrepit regime where, you know, we once were the shining city on the hill, but now we're kind of falling apart. Now we're killing each other in our streets. But Jack, you know, real quick. You're not even letting kids go to school. Real quick, though, when uh, when they said that, do you think the left was embarrassed by that comment at all or no? You know, I think it's interesting. I don't think the left is very self-aware. I think they see themselves more, or they don't really, they see themselves as moral crusaders. And this is, you know, Dr. Malone used the phrase mass formation psychosis. I think it's not really something that en that they hear and that that enters in. You know, they're probably saying, oh, well, that'll probably get fact check away because fact checks really are just uh, software programming updates that are sent to the NPCs whenever, whenever anything short circuits their programming. <laughs> well, Jack, again, thank you so much for everything you do, being a TPUSA contributor to Hewlett Events Daily. Everybody follow Jack because he's keeping you updated on everything that's going on in Russia and Ukraine. Jack, thanks so much for joining us.